Deputy Catherine Connolly, please. Corla, and uh, I want to thank Sinn Féin for the opportunity of um, speaking on this motion, although I won't be in a position to support the motion, and I will um, uh, try to clarify why. Um, I think it's not appropriate at the moment, given that there's a commission of investigation, and I think we should be using our combined strength to change the terms of reference of that commission, to force accountability in relation to the interim report that is sitting on a desk since September 2016 without an explanation as to what is going on. And we should be listening to the survivors and the families, including my own, which have been deeply and personally affected by the mother and baby home scandals. And Minister, you quote from Heaney, and while he is one of my favourite poets, and normally I would delight in hearing his poetry quoted anywhere, I would have preferred if you quoted from some of the survivors, or indeed if you quoted from the briefing document that was prepared last October 2012 by officials in the Department of Health, highlighting the very serious issues in relation to patient and health, patient safety, baby safety in the mother and baby home in Tum and Bespera, in relation to the possible alteration of birth certs and death certs, and in relation to many other serious issues. That was October 2012, in the context of the Martin McAleese report, which they said they hadn't the wherewithal to investigate. That's one of, one of I'm sure, how many other briefing documents we don't know, Minister. And while I accept your bona fides, and I've said this publicly, my confidence in that bona fides has been stretched a little, notwithstanding that you inherited the situation. And it's certainly been stretched by your failure to publish the interim report. And I really wish that's what we were discussing here in this stall with the view to having an, Im an influence in relation to the terms of reference, the scoping extension that you're talking about, and so on. And so now we're talking about a truth commission, rather than force and accountability in relation to the ongoing process. And that's one of the serious failures that I've seen in this Dáil in my time and prior to it, the utter failure of the Dáil to hold the system to account, a point that's repeated ad nauseum by the judges when they are put in charge of tribunals. And they repeatedly have said, if politicians asked questions and demanded answers, we wouldn't need as many tribunals. And so here we have a commission of inquiry with an interim report that hasn't been published and no excuse for that. Now that in itself is appalling. And then we have a statement from yourself saying that we are coming to terms with the news as a community, as a people and as a nation. Well, let me tell you, as someone who is affected, and I'll try to stay off the personal, we are coming to terms not with what happened, but with the continuous hiding of that by successive governments and by successive institutions. And so I've highlighted one document, a briefing document, not referred to you, not referred to anybody in the government, as to why wasn't that acted upon. In relation to vaccine trials, which, have been, which has been highlighted, that was highlighted in the uh, Commission into Child Abuse. And unfortunately, there was a judicial review to stop because they said that that tribunal or inquiry was acting outside its terms of reference. No government has gone back to look at that, to examine that. Once again, that was left. In relation to the current inquiry, I have asked repeatedly for a number of things. I have asked that the site in Tume be sealed off forensically and held. I have asked that other sites be looked at. I have asked that the current commission, that the time be extended to allow more people to come forward now in view of what was um, confirmed in June. I would say not discovered, because Catherine Corliss highlighted this two years ago. The Commission of Inquiry into Child Abuse was certainly aware of it from the many people who came forward and gave testimony. The Martin McAleese interdepartmental inquiry was fully aware of what was going on in the mother and baby homes. So none of this comes as a shock. The shock is the continued cover-up. So I'm not looking for reconciliation at this point. For me, as someone who's been affected by the survivors who are struggling gallantly to survive, they haven't asked for reconciliation. 
What they've asked for is to be treated with dignity and respect and be given maximum information. And you talk about empowering, and I take that at face value, Minister. And you empower people and survivors by giving them maximum information. That is not happening. And so we have somebody down the High Court currently looking for records and having to go to the High Court to force a situation to get information about his sister. And all of this is on the public record. And when we see death certs for places like the mother and baby home in Tume, we can't rely on those because the briefing document back in October 12 told us there was a serious possibility that those death certs had been tampered with. And so now we have a situation where we're, are we to mourn for those that are related to us, that are supposedly buried in chambers, in, in the mother and baby home in Tume, Vesper and elsewhere? Or are we to go and look and see, have they been adopted in America through illegal adoptions? And again, Minister, the briefing document highlights that babies were shipped to America amongst many other countries and that there were triple payments to the mother and baby homes. I, the two that are cited are Bespur and Tume. Payments by the mother, payments by the state and payments by the adoptive parents in America who were waiting for their children to come over, their children they were going to adopt. All of this has been set out. None of it is new. Not one single piece of it is new. So, Minister, if you're seriously interested in starting a new regime, if you're seriously interested in openness and accountability, let's stop issuing statements that you're going to talk to the historians and the academics and the advocates. And let's make a statement that we're going to listen to the survivors and the families in the first instance. Please stand up in the doll and account for why the report hasn't been published. Commit to a full and frank uh, debate about that report as soon as it is published and confirm tonight the date of the publication of that report. That's what openness and accountability means, at least to me. And that's the least that the survivors deserve. And I'll finish and paying tribute to Mary Raftery, whose name is not heard often enough in this stall. And she died prematurely in the 10th of the 1st, 2012, as a result of her extraordinary work, States of Fear, back in 1999, her book, Suffer Little Children, and Cardinal Secrets. She, that woman exposed more in Ireland and forced inquiries and forced one situation after another, not this stall that should have forced the situation. And in case anybody here forgets, let me finally quote from a Fianna Fáil minister back in 1999. In September, I beg your pardon, in September 2099, 2009, the then Minister for Education, Bat O'Keefe, said these women, these were the Magdalene women, were not entitled this is 2009, we're not entitled to redress from the state, as the state did not refer individuals, nor was it complicit in referring individuals to the Magdalene Laundries. That was and remains the level of denial in this country. We've seen since the, the McAleese report, that was forced by the Human Rights and Equality Commission, who did their own report. So, Minister... If you've heard what I said and you're truly interested in being open and accountable, let's start here tonight. Confirm the date, confirm that there will be an open discussion on that with the view to looking at possibly a commission of inquiry or a truth, but in the first instance extending the terms of the current inquiry. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Matty McGrath.